everyone, it's Robin Riley for Dobello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial that I'm calling the Night Sky. Today I'm going to show you two variations of color choices that you can use to create this night sky. You'll be surprised to see how simple this is to actually do. Hey, but before we get started here um, on the supplied list, let me invite you to our Facebook groups. We have two of them, the Dobello's Design Lounge, and that's where we showcase all of our Lavinia stamps and all of the other Lavinia products. We also have another page called the Dobello's Design a la carte, and there we showcase all of the other current products that Patty has in the store. We are on other social media platforms such as TikTok, Pinterest, and Instagram. And to find us there, all you have to do is search the hashtag Delbello's Designs. Okay, let's get started on these cards. And I will go over the supply list for each card separately. So let's start with this first one here. The supplies that I used... Today I'm using Distress inks. Now you could use oxides. The reason I chose to do it in Distress inks today is simply because I had the colors that I wanted in this specific line of ink. I didn't have them all in the oxides, but either would work. So the first one I'll be using is Tumbled Glass. And take note, um, the order in which that I am using these inks, I go from the lightest to the darkest shade. So I, I will start with Tumbled Glass, Broken China, Evergreen Bow, and Prize Ribbon. I will be stamping the rubber stamps using VersaFine Claire Nocturne. The stamps that I'll be using for this particular card. The first one is called Maka. Um, his number is LAV535. And a cardio sentiment that comes in a set of, I believe there's six, no, there are actually eight sentiments in this set. The set is called Wise Words A6. I will also be using the following tools. A blending brush. I will be using a fan brush to apply the water splatters. I will be using a permanent marker if I need to touch up some missing black ink. The shadowing that is under Maca, I used a black pencil. This happens to be a Faber-Castell polychromo, but any black pencil will work. I will be using a Posca pen in white, which creates the white splatters. For the nighttime sky. I possibly could be using a paper stump which is used to blend out my colored pencil. It all depends on how well I color if I actually need that. I will also be using a bone folder. The size of this particular card is four and a quarter by five and three quarter inches and it is a heavyweight card measuring 300 GSM. For me, that's important because that lets me know, the higher that number, that it will hold a lot of moisture. So that way I'm not using a watercolor paper. This seems to work pretty well for me. The card base that this topper will be placed on will be a card base that measures six inches by nine inches, and it will be scored at the four and a half inch mark. All right, that will be for the first card. Now, the second card here, these are the inks that I used. And again, I used distressed inks, but you could use the oxides if you had those colors in the, in the oxide line. Spun Sugar, Victorian Velvet, Seedless Preserves, and chipped sapphire. 
most of the stamps, as you can see, these three that I'm pointing to, I use the VersaFine Claire Nocturne. And to add a little more dimension, I use the Monarch in the VersaFine Claire line also. The stamps that you see here, those deer come from a cardio set that has lots and lots of um, animals in it. It is called the Christmas Companions A6. Now, as you look here, you can see there are white dots on the deer, their eyes, their ears. I did not want that in my card. I wanted these to be more of a silhouette and I simply used the black marker. I'll show you that as we get to that. I also used another sentiment. It doesn't matter where you are going. What matters is you have who you have beside you. And that comes from that same wise word, A6 set from Cardio. I have Lavinia stamps. The tallest of the trees is the fairy fir tree, LAV 478, which this is a must have. For me, I probably use this more than any other tree that I have in my stash. And fir tree number one, LAV 094. Now the supplies that I'll be using for this card, again, I'll be using blending brushes and basically the same exact tools. I will use a fan brush to create watermarks. I have that black marker at the ready if I need to touch up, which I will have to because I wanna color in those white marks. The Posca pen in white for the splatters. Again, I'm using a black colored pencil to create the shadowing. A paper stump for blending and the bone folder will be used to crease the card once I put it together. Um, one more thing that I want to show you, I, I will, a few more supplies, I should say. I am going to be using a ruler. You need a ruler with that Posca pen to create the splats. You'll see how that works when we get there. I will be using the Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear Glue to adhere my card topper to the card base. I will need some sort of water. I'm gonna just be using it from this sprayer. And I'm going to be using my Misty Stamping Tool. Now this is the original one. And I did a little uh, look and see on, with Google. Misty came out around the year 2015, I believe, and I bought it as soon as it was available on the market. If you've watched previous videos of mine, you know that I'm not the greatest using an acrylic block. So this helps me with precision and good stamping. I get a nice even stamp when I use my MISTI. How many of you knew what MISTI stood for? MISTI stands for the most incredible stamp tool invented and I have to agree, it has to be one of the best stamping tools available on the market. Something else, I would just kind of want to go over this for those of you that might be riding the edge or questioning the fact, do you really need a Misty? So as you can see, the door flips open. Here you have the surface that you can work on. Crazy strong magnets. Believe me when I say crazy strong. Here, these two got connected at one point and they're so strong that the pinch hurt pretty bad. It's really difficult to get these apart and mine actually cracked when they hit. Now, if they get stuck together, the easiest way to separate them is to slide them and then pull. Trying to pull them directly off of each other is virtually impossible. At least I'm not strong enough to do it. So remember that if they get hooked together, you wanna slide them apart and then lift. That'll make life easier. So I keep the ends of these tape, main reason because they're broken and they're super sharp, but it does help in lifting them off of the mat. Now I have always used the paper that comes in a tablet form for my Misty, and that's what keeps the inside of mine clean. And yep, you can see I can flip it over. There's a dirty side, so I can get multiple uses out of one piece of paper. 
Some people actually laminate this so that they don't have to continue to buy the tablets of paper. They can just wipe it off with a damp cloth. Now your Misty will also come with a foam pad underneath. Mine is adhered with just some tape right now. And you can see mine is very well used and very well loved. But this does remove. And you remove this when you are working with the red rubber stamps, which are really thick. But for our purposes today, the stamps that I'm going to be using are the acrylic stamps, so they're thin. So the foam pad needs to be down. I keep my pad somewhat clean by using this paper. I keep everything in place with my magnets. Now, the other product that you may be interested in, as you use your Misty, naturally, you're going to get ink in places that you really don't want it. Sometimes it'll be on the door. This is a product that is recommended to be used with the Misty stamping tool, the Novus Plastic Clean and Shine. And it is just a spray. You give it a shake. You spray it on the plastic surface and use a microfiber cloth. That's actually the easiest. And you wash it off and then you buff it with the dry area of that cloth. And it really does remove all of that ink and whatever mess you may have on your Misty. Okay, that being said, let's get started. Let me grab my first card topper. And the first card that I'm going to try to replicate will be this. All right, let's get started. My sleeves rolled up here, grab those inks, and I am starting with the tumbled glass. I'm working from lightest to darkest. So I'm gonna load up my ink onto my brush. Now my ink is rather dry. This is not like a super wet, wet um, pad. So I'm gonna still try to be very light-handed. And I wanna suggest that you be very light-handed when you start this process. You want to uh, build slowly. And recently I had someone ask, why do you all say that you build slowly? The reason being is it's easy to add ink but it's, it's really hard to take the ink away. So you want to build slowly till you get the desired color onto your paper. So for this process, I am working in a vertical motion. I am just drawing the ink down the paper. It's okay that I'm getting this dark line on the edge because eventually it's going to be very dark there. So I'm not worried about that. I'm going to try to concentrate my colors in three areas. I want it concentrated on the left side, the middle, and the right side. Slowly, I'm going to just work my way across Take a peek at that original. See how it's lighter here in those two areas and the concentration of ink are in those three areas that I just pointed out. That's the look I'm trying to go for. Now you need to remember which area is the top of your card and which area is the bottom. I don't know if you could see, but I grabbed a piece of scrap paper that I'm laying on the bottom to prevent my fingertips from leaving um, oily marks from my fingers. I, I don't want that to appear. And it can appear without a doubt. Now I'm going to rotate my card. And what I'm going to do is the same process. I'm just going to drag my ink in a vertical motion. Not so much worried about this being in three areas, like I said, a concentration on the left, the middle, and the right. I just want a very light coating. I hope you can see how light this is. Uh, a little tip here, when you're using a piece of scratch paper to keep your fingers your fingerprints, oily prints off of your card. Remember to keep it far enough away 
from the brush that you're using or the blending tool that you're using because you don't want to create a line across your card. Okay, I'm going to rotate back to the top. I'm bringing in my next color, which is Broken China, and I am going to repeat this process again. I'm going to start at the top using that vertical motion. My first pass, I go over the entire card itself. My next pass, I'm going to concentrate my colors on the left side, the middle side, and the right side. I'm going to rotate and do basically the same thing that I did originally, is just add this color all across the base, trying to be light-handed. And that's a chore for me because I'm not always that light-handed. As you can see, I'm developing a very dark edge on the bottom and that's, that's really okay. Rotating back to my top, the next ink I'm bringing in is the Evergreen Bow. And I am going to go ahead and mix that color in with my blue brush. It definitely doesn't hurt my brush. All right, this gives a really nice shade of a, well, it's more of a teal color, I think. So remember, going from left to right, all the way across, and then coming back to concentrate more color on the left side, the middle side, and the right side. This creates some really neat streaks in the sky. I don't want to say this looks like the auroras, but it almost gives you the appearance of the auroras. Rotating back to the bottom, I want to add some more of this color. Evergreen Bow, I think, is a um, underrated color. I remember when I first got it, I wasn't sure that I even really cared for it. But I, I've got to be honest with you, the more I've used it, the more I really love this shade. And if you're going for a teal color, it's just a great one to, to use. Okay, let's rotate back to the top. Now I'm going to use the prize ribbon. This is a beautiful blue, beautiful shade of blue. It's great for night skies. All right, going over the entire card from left to right, adding a very light layer of this prize ribbon. And then I'm going to concentrate more color on the left, the middle, and the right. Flipping it over, and I'm going to go right along that base to give just a fine layer of that prize ribbon. Now what I like to do is repeat the entire process again. I think by doing this, I get a nicer blend of my colors. It just adds another layer and the more you learn about blending, you do find out that if you, if you take your time and repeat your colors at least one more time, say at least one more layer, if you repeat them, you will see that your blending is going to look so much smoother. Now, granted, this is not smooth because you're seeing the streaking. I want that streaking. Broken China next, rotating and repeating. But just simply by taking the time, adding another layer or two, I mean, this is something that you can do for a long time. You can add as many layers as you want so that you get a nice smooth blend. All right, still, I'm still trying to focus on keeping the areas extremely dark where I want them. 
Gonna drag just a little bit into that white space. I don't want it to be perfectly white. Okay, Continue, continuing to rotate. Evergreen bow. Get a little more of that teal shade in here. All right, focusing on those areas where I want it to be extra dark. Another layer on the bottom. I love how by doing this vertical motion, you kind of create a, a, a neat um, grounding effect without even really trying. Okay, lastly, I'm going to do the prize ribbon. One last coat of this for now. Now, you may look at your card and want to add more, which is simply fine. That's what you want to do your own thing. You don't want to do exactly what I'm doing. But you want to add your own depth of color to your liking. But I think at this point, I am going to stop with the vertical movement. I'm going all the way back to that broken china. Gonna grab some more. Now this time around, I am going to very, very lightly, in a circular motion, add a light layer of the broken china. And I will repeat that with each color. So this is going to simply smooth out a few of those lines. They're not going to be as harsh. All right, tumbled glass. So I think I went out of order, but it really doesn't matter to be honest with you. This will, it'll all work out. So as you can see, just by adding another light layer, it really creates a nice blend to your card. All right, hang with me guys. Just another layer of the evergreen bow. Again, circular motion, just to take some of the harshness of those lines away. And you know what? If you really like the look of those harsh lines. That's great. I, that's fine. Like I said, this is just an idea for you how to create. All right. Lastly, I'm bringing in that prize ribbon. And this time I'm really going to focus on my corners and my edges. I really want to create that darkness in my night sky in those areas. I'll do a quick once over. And I'm even going to add a darker layer on the edges. This just kind of finishes the card off. This is something you could do at the very end too. You wouldn't have to do it at this point, but being that I have all the ink out, I'm gonna get this part done. All right, I think I'm okay with that. Now, as this goes on, if I'm not happy with the result, naturally, I can come back in and add more color if I wanted to. All right, let me clean off my surface here just a little bit so I don't transform more colors in areas that I don't want it. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in with this fan brush and I just recently purchased these from Patty. And you know, I have to be honest with you, um, the the original paintbrushes that I were I was using came from a local big box store. And if I paid five dollars for the entire set, it, yeah, right? It was just a really cheap set, is what I'm trying to say. So I have found and I have learned, you know, you pay for, you get what you pay for. I can't remember the exact price of this. I'll have the link at the bottom in the description. But you know what? It's worth every penny to buy yourself decent brushes. 
All I'm going to do here is create a little puddle of water. And I'm going to dip my brush in. I'm going to take off some of the excess simply by tapping lightly. I don't want big blobs. I really just want some light light specks of water. And I'm going to try to just have this in the top area of my card, nowhere else. If I get a few elsewhere, it's fine. But my focus wanted to be right there on the top. Let me clean off that water. All right, as you can see, some of those spots instantly started to appear. All right, and the more this dries, the brighter those spots will be in the sky. Now, next step is to bring in my stamping tool. I'm gonna place this in the corner with a magnet and maybe two magnets. And I'm going to bring in Maka, set him where I want him to be. And I will use the Distress, or I'm sorry, the VersaFine Clara and Nocturne. Now this is the great part about having a Misty Stamper, is if you don't get a great print on the first press, you can come back in and redo it. And then you'll have a really nice one. Just make sure everything is secure. All right. Pressing. Now I am going to cheat a little bit. Boy, our weather changed drastically when we uh, switched seasons. My fingers are pretty achy, so I like to use a hockey puck, an air hockey puck tool, to help me press my image into the card. Let's see if I got a decent print. Okay, not too bad. There is a little bit missing, so what I'm going to do just come back in, re-ink Maka. And if everything has stayed aligned, I should be in good shape here. Whoops. Let me bring in my little tool. Give it a press. All right, awesome. Now, get in the habit of cleaning your stamps I used an old microfiber cloth with water. Get that cleaned off. Yes, they may stain, but that never hurts the quality of your stamp. But if you get in that habit of cleaning it right away, then the staining won't be as serious. I don't know if you can see here, but there is a small little dot that'll drive me insane if I don't cover that with black. So I'm just using a permanent black marker. Gonna touch that up. This one I, I bought at Target. Um, you can use a Sharpie. Oh, and it's only a little dot. So to be honest, no one's gonna know that you did that. You're not gonna see a difference in shade. Okay, I'm also going to come in now with that sentiment stamp. And I'm going to place that in the lighter area. I wanna make sure that that's rather straight. Okay, let's see. There are grid lines on here that will help with lining up your stamp. And using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne again, going to ink up that sentiment. Now, keep in mind, when you're stamping sentiments, you don't want to push too, too hard because you can flatten out the letters in a sen sentiment. So just press gently. Nothing too, too hard. And you will get a good imprint of your stamp. This one says, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. Get that stamp cleaned off quickly. And now I'm going to take this, being careful not to hook those together. All right, looking pretty good. Now, 
basically the last step that we have is to simply add those, I'm cleaning off my hands, guys, I don't wanna make a mess. Um, we're gonna add those splats to the night sky to represent stars. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just bring in a piece of paper towel and I'm going to cover up my stamped image. Actually, I'm gonna blot that to help it dry quicker. All right, now this is the area in which I want those splats to appear. All right, so you take the pa that Posca white Posca pen. Really doesn't matter what size you have. This happens to be a thinner one of mine. And I'm going to make sure the ink is flowing, which it is. Using the ruler, I'm going to whack this. Now, sometimes, especially if this is a newer one, it takes a few good wax to get the paint to start to splatter. But mine's rather old, so I think I should be getting some splats rather quick. Oops, those aren't splats. Those are actually dried pieces of paint, not to worry. Let me splat this off on the side. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to gently position the pen in an area where I would like the splats to be concentrated. The harder I hit, the bigger some of the splats will be. If I hit softly, then I should get smaller dots. I hope you're able to see that. Now this is personal choice, how many stars you wanna put in the sky, but that is how I do it. Now this, does dry rather quickly. Give you a close up. So by the time I'm done with the shading of Maca, I should pretty much have a dry sky so that I can finish the card. So for shading, all I'm going to do is take that black colored pencil. And with any colored pencil, whether you're using a polychromo which I considered the cream of the crop, or you're using something that you just bought, let's say at the dollar store or a local big box store, it doesn't matter. The idea and the trick with using a colored pencil is layering, always layer light to dark. If you go in and put on a heavy dark layer, you're going to see a sheen appear. And once you have that sheen, there's no moving it. You're not going to be able to blend. So you go very lightly, very, very lightly. You might see some lines and that's okay. Don't worry about the lines. Or you can go in a circular motion to apply a thin layer. So get that where a, a thin layer where you want it. Don't press hard. If you see that sheen, you're, no, you're gonna know that you've pressed way too hard. I'm kind of going in an oval um, pattern here. I'm kind of trying to rush here so I don't bore you with my coloring. Now, once I have that first layer down, I hope you can see how light of a layer I put on there. The other reason you don't wanna press hard is I haven't given this card sufficient time to dry. So if I were to press now, I'd rip the top layer of this paper off. You are gonna let yours dry sufficiently before you do this part. But for the sake of time, I'm going to go in with the second layer now without letting that dry and try not to rip my paper. And now the closer I get to Maca, the darker I'm going to make this part. So you continue doing that, adding layers. The darkest of the shadow needs to be the closest to the animal. Get in there between his tail and his paws. Kind of miss that. All right, I'll do another quick layer here. Now you take your time when you do this, make sure everything is nice and dry before you add the shadow. And I am going to attempt to use the 
Oh goodness, now I can't find it. There it is, my blending pencil, which is really, all this blending pencil is, is tight rolled paper. Uh, I think you may be able to see the seam there. So these are made from paper and you can actually buy a, um, oh, where's mine? Let me show you. This is, this is how you sharpen a paper stump. You can actually buy this tool. It usually comes in a package, all right? And this is sandpaper on a little particle board. And you just scrape to sharpen this. Plus, that's how you clean off previous colors. This one happens to be a double-ended, so I can have both nice and clean. If you don't want to purchase this, you can use a emery board and get the same results. Okay, so to go in with the blending stump, I really have to be super careful here because my card is not dry. But you just rub this very gently over that penciled area and that will blend out a lot of the streaking that you see from the pencil and make it much smoother. I really can't press hard on this right now because I don't want to ruin this card, but it's just the round circular movement that you want to make with the blending tool. Again, make sure your card is drier than what mine is. Okay, so there's number one. Granted, it looks similar, but definitely not the same. There's no way you can replicate the same thing twice, guys. It just doesn't work that way. But let's jump on and do the next card. Okay, with this one, the ink colors again, working from lightest to darkest. Sponge Sugar, Victorian Velvet, Seabus Preserves, and Chip Sapphire. And I am going to do the same process, starting with the lightest color, Remember, you want to start with vertical, vertical lines all the way across your paper. And this is so light, this color. It is extremely light. I don't even know that the camera is picking this up for you, but I'm putting a nice light layer across the entire card. Then I'll come in and I'm going to focus on the left the center, and the right side. Flipping it over, I wanna do the base. Remember, I'm using this to keep fingerprints off of my card. And here I'm just going to put a nice light layer all the way across the bottom, not focusing on those three areas. Okay, spinning it around. Victorian Velvet. First layer goes all the way across my card. Remember, I'm using a very, very light hand. Very light. Now I will focus my color in those three areas again. You can start to see it develop. Spinning around to the bottom. some of that in that white area. Now I'm going to come in with the seedless preserves and this time I am actually going to switch to my purple brush. Light hand, light hand Robin. Don't go hard. This is a definitely a wetter ink pad. Really are going to see the streaks here because this is a much darker color and a wetter pad. Now I'll focus on those areas, the left, the center, and the right. Don't worry if your vertical lines aren't like perfectly vertical. I mean, that's not the, the goal here. You just want to use that motion. Now I'm going to go all the way across the bottom. And my last color is the chipped sapphire. Again, this is one of those underrated colors, I think. This ch chipped sapphire seriously makes 
for the best skies when I'm doing a background and I want a dark sky, this is the color I really will focus on. As you can see, it's really creating that edge that I want to have eventually. Okay, focusing on my center area more and the right area. Look how fun, to me this is fun watching this develop. I think that's kind of cool looking. Okay, now all the way across the bottom I'm going to go. Creating my landscape here on the bottom. Okay, repeat. Same thing, same order. Sponge sugar. And remember you do this in layers. I'm doing this a little heavy, more heavy handed than what I did the first time around. Um, again, it's just for me to move this video along so you're not too, too bored with me. But this gives a nice blend. Okay. Victorian velvet layer. Gonna just focus mainly in those three areas. Let's see if I can blend out some of this purple here. Purple, yeah, the chip sapphire. All right. There we go. I'm starting to see the blend that I really want to achieve right there. Seedless Preserves with the purple. Let me spin to the top. I have to remember this is wet. This card's going to definitely be dark. So with, these, with this color combination, keep that in mind. You do want your stamped images to be able to stand out. Focus a little more dark here on this edge. There we go. And then the chipped sapphire. Drag some of that down here. Okay. And my last bout, I'm going to really just keep this low. And the last round is when we do that circular motion. Believe it or not, I am going to put that sponge sugar all over this card. I don't know if you could see that, but as soon as I started to do that motion, I could see a real nice blend take place. And those streaks are definitely not that harsh. Okay, Victorian Velvet for the last time around. Please, when you're doing this, don't do it as quickly as I am. Give yourself time to work on this slowly and build up your colors. Your card will look definitely much better the more time you take. Okay, Seedless Preserves for the last time. Again, I wanna go very light-handed because this is dark, and I'm going to keep most of my focus near the top. I'm gonna to add some to the sides to help darken those. And here, just the corners a little bit on the base, and this side I wanna darken. And lastly, Let's get that chip sh sapphire around the entire card. And this is when I'm going to just basically focus on all four corners and just the edges. I don't want to bring any more darkness into the center of my card. 
just that edge. Again, keep in mind this is to your liking as to how dark or how light you want this to be. All right, I'm gonna stop there and we're gonna jump right into the stamping. Let me clean off my surface quickly. Bring that misty back in. Okay, let me get a magnet where I need it to be. I'm going to start with the deer and I'm going to stamp them both at the same time. I have one here, and this one's going to be looking up a tad bit to the sky. Let me get them a little closer. Now, you'll see when I stamp these, they're going to have their spots as if they are still fawns. And I want to eliminate those spots. Using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, I want to get these stamped up. Now you could leave those spots. Again, that's that's up to you. That's your choice. My choice was to make them more of a silhouette. Okay, let me get those pressed on there. I'm going to do one more stamping because I can see through a little bit on the back ends of the deer. So I want that to be a little more concentrated in that area. All right, so now you can see what I was talking about as far as the the dots, the um, dots on the fawns. And this little guy, you can see the inside of his ears and his nose and his eye, and I just don't want that for this particular card. So I'm just going to use that black permanent marker, and I just tap my ink in I try to be respectful of the card because it is wet. And if I went in there and like started to grind at it, I might rip that card because it is a tad bit wet. So my suggestion to you is make sure you let your cards dry in between each layer that you add of the ink and then make sure you let it dry with the um, stamping also. Okay, let me get that in. You can see that, you know what, even though this black marker may not be 100% the same exact shade, it's awfully close to that. Okay, I need to move my marker so that when I stamp this large tree, and this tree is really large, Again, like I told you, it's probably one of my most favorite trees in the um, trees that I actually have. I need to move this down to make it fit. Okay, the entire tree cannot fit on this size card, and I do like to stamp it off to the side. So using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne again, Gonna get that stamped in place. Hopefully I can do that in one stamping. Get that rubbed on there. Okay, go, oh yes, I'm happy with that, that's good. Okay, let me quickly clean off my stamp. You can see this is very well loved, even though I clean it often and immediately when I'm stamping, it still has stained, but it does nothing to the quality of the stamp. You still get a beautiful image. See, you can see the staining. That's okay, not a problem. Okay, so I have one big, large stamp there. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to do a second generation of this stamp just off to the side. And I need to scoot this up a little bit just so the stamp stays within the openings. All right, I'm going to ink it up, but I'm not going to ink it up as heavily as I did the first time around. I 
I'm going to come in with my scrap piece that I was using and I am going to stamp off, I hope this fits. Yeah, I wanna stamp off one layer of ink, okay? Because what I want is a second generation stamp here in the Nocturne. I'm not pressing very hard. Okay, that's all I wanted. Do you see how that gives the appearance of a tree further off in the distance? That's what a second generation of stamping will do for you. All right. Next, I'm going to bring in fir tree number one, which is a small version of a pine tree, which I absolutely love. I got a drop of water there, but that's okay. It'll all blend in and be just fine. So this one is the one I'm going to stamp in Monarch. And this is just going to add a little bit of dimension. When you use another color, like I'm doing here, purple, it creates an illusion of dimension. Yes, I could have just stamped them black. It would have been just fine. But I like doing this, again, just for the dimension purposes. Okay, I hope you can see that. I'll hold that up here in a second for you. The purple just gives a, I just love that combination. See how that is? I think that's really cool. Okay. Now let's get that sentiment stamped. All right. This set of sentiments from Cordio's Oh, gosh, one of my most favorite. I, I keep saying things are my most favorite, but, but they really are. This is just one of those really good ones that you should have in your stash. I'm trying to eyeball that to make sure it's relatively straight. Using the ink. The Nocturne ink, I'm going to remember. It's a sentiment, so don't press too hard. You don't want to... Make your letters look fat. All right, excellent. That's good, good, good for me. Now, I kind of am doing this one in a different order just to show you that it's okay that you do things in a different order. On that first card, I went and did the watermarks before I did the stamping. But if you like, oh my, I forgot to do them. You can do it now. It's not a problem at all. So let's use that handy paper towel again. And all you're going to do is block off the areas where you do not want the water to splat. So I don't want it around my deer. I don't want it around my trees. I'm even going to cover this. Okay, so no matter what order you do it in, it's okay. It all works out. There's no rules. No one's going to say or know that you did it in a different order. So again, I'm just starting out with a small puddle of water, putting that fan brush in the water, tapping off the excess, because I don't want these to be too, too large. And I'm just going to add a few. Hopefully I can get some, oh yeah, I did, I hit that corner. Okay, that was easy. Now, as you can see, I'll remove that. There's just a nice light splattering of the water. And remember, as I said, this will get darker or brighter. I'm sorry, the white will get brighter as it dries. I'm going to use the same method to apply the white spatters. Let me get this covered. Now, if you wanted to change this card up a little bit, you could use this Posca pen and act as if this were snow. So maybe you would want the snow falling on your deer. That would, that would be a great alternative to what I'm doing here. Uh, it would be just a different look. So you wouldn't wanna cover any of this. Okay, bring in that ruler and you're going to whack away to get your white splatters.
in that night sky. Again, up to you how much you want to add. And there we go, just enough for my liking so that it looks like stars. Let me clean this off quickly and then we'll do a little bit of the shading as much as I can on this wet card. Again, I'm just using the black marker. I'm going to add very light layer. Remember, start light, then go in and build up each layer. Keep in mind my card is wet, so I can't do it as well as I would like to do it for you. But I can add a light layer and then go back in and darken it as I want it to be darkened. Going in now, just adding a second layer, hoping to darken up a little bit under each hoof. I'll use the blending stump one more time. No, I won't because I, oh, here it is. I was gonna say, never mind, but here, I found it. Okay, just very lightly. Oh, I gotta go super lightly because this is super wet still. Just to blend it out. I don't know if you saw that, but here I started to, I started to lift some of the ink, which again, you know what? That's not that big of a deal. Even if I continued and I lifted that ink, I could come back in with my blending brush and fill that in and nobody would know that that occurred. So there's, there's, there's a will, there's a way. You can fix up most mistakes because you're the only one that's going to know that that occurred. Even like, okay, so that white dot, that was a mistake where a droplet of water fell from God knows where. If that really gets on my nerves, I could come back in with that brush, even without adding any more ink, and I could darken that area. I just need to be gentle so I don't rip that paper. But as you can see, I've already darkened it. So if I give it time to dry, I could come in and add some more and get rid of that. And again, who's gonna know but you, right? Okay, so to finish off the cards, the card base, I'm only gonna finish off one for you because they're identical. So I take my card base, I've already scored it, halfway through and what I do is where my score line is all right that is called the valley that is the area in which the point of my bone folder pressed through my scoreboard it made a valley I always bend up into the valley if I were to bend the other direction if I flip this over and I bend it this way I have a chance of cracking my paper. The other thing you did, can do to help from cracking your paper is to spray a fine mist of water in the air. I can't do it on camera, but you have to trust me on this. A fine mist in the air, whiffed your card through that mist. That laves a very fine mist on your paper so that when you fold it, it won't crack. Using the bone folder, I come in and make a nice crease on my paper. Got some wet here. Let me remove that. Okay. And, yep, I did a smudge there, but that's okay. No one's going to see it. This will be glued underneath. It'll be glued under here. So all I'm going to do is use my Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue. Great glue super fine tip if you purchase the tips. See, it's just a metal tip that you purchase separately. Sometimes you can find kits of this, but I believe in the shop we have everything separate. You don't even have to cut the hole. It's already there for you. You place the metal tip on the top, give it a good press down, and you will need a pin. And when you purchase the metal tip, It'll come with a pin. If you lose the pin, any straight pin will work and you wanna keep that sealed. That keeps the glue from drying inside that small little tip. This is my absolute all-time favorite glue. You can see how fine the 
stream of glue is. Okay. And then I'm just going to eyeball it and center it. What's nice about this glue, if a little bit does sneak out underneath of your card topper, it dries clear, it does not dry shiny. I tend to just rub my fingernail along that edge to pick up any excess glue that may, be, uh, may have squeezed out. And yep, I have a dirty finger, so I made a smudge. And in that case, if you make smudges on your paper, this is a number one go-to eraser, a sand eraser from Tombow, the mono sand eraser. And when your ink smudge dries, which I saw one on the back here, all you do is simply rub this very lightly over the smudge. It does remove a fine layer of your paper. And if it's not dry, it'll tear your paper, as you can see there. I'm glad I did it on this side. Okay, but it does work really well when the card is dry. Don't do it when your card is wet. Okay, so there you have it. These were the, here's the original one that I had made. Here's the one that we just made together. Kind of similar, not too bad. The skies came out great. I'm happy with those. I hope you are too. And then here is Maka, my original, and the one I made with you. Hey, I hope you give this a go. This is a fun way to create some night skies. Use your own color combinations. You definitely want to pick a light, medium, and dark shade of ink to work with. I chose four, but I think this could be easily done with three shades of ink if you happen not to have all three shades in the same color family. So if you decide to make one of these, how about sharing with us in the group? Tag me and let me know if you enjoy this. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>